What's going on everybody and welcome to Rock and Roll True Stories. Now for those of you who are a bit younger, you guys may find this hard to believe, but at one point in time, Saturday Night Live used to be a funny show. So back in the year 2000, they had this great skit that made fun of the Blue Oyster Cult hit song, Don't Fear the Reaper. Now it's kind of hard to tell when you watch an SNL skit or when these guys are writing those skits, what's going to become a huge hit or quickly fade from memory. Now, of course, I'm talking about the more cowbell sketch as it's better known by. And for somebody who's watched SNL for the last 20 years or so, usually the first hour of the show is usually where the best sketches are. Once Weekend Update is over, that's when I turn off the episode. But what's funny about this sketch is that it was tucked away towards the end of the episode and it wasn't even present in the first hour. So the skit imagines the recording session that took place with the band Blue Oyster Cult when they were recording the song Don't Fear the Reaper, specifically the contributions made by the fictional cowbell player Gene Frankel, who's played by Will Ferrell, who's aggressively encouraged by the cowbell craving producer Bruce Dickinson, who was played by Christopher Walken, who was the host that night. So how did Will Ferrell come up with the idea for the skit? So the idea came to him when he was listening to the song Don't Fear the Reaper over the years, and he told an interviewer, every time I heard the song, I would hear the faint cowbell in the background and wonder, what is that guy's life like? So he co-wrote the sketch with his friend and playwright Donald Campbell. And Farrell first submitted it for an episode with Norm Macdonald as the host, which would air on October 23rd, 1999, almost six months prior to when it actually aired. Now, SNL's executive producer, Lauren Michaels, was unsure about the premise, although the sketch played well among the crew at the table read. So according to Seth Meyers, who was the head writer for several seasons on the show, he said the sketch was submitted over seven times before finally making the show, and Farrell would end up rewriting the sketch when Christopher Walken was scheduled to host to fit the actor's rhythm. So the sketch was put near the end of the episode where more offbeat and odd sketches then air. Now apart from the whole premise being hilarious, the other most memorable part of the skit is that some of the actors had trouble keeping a straight face, including Jimmy Fallon and Horatio Sands. So they found Farrell's acting along with Walken's stone face performance so funny that they were all on the verge of breaking character and ruining the skit several times. So throughout the skit, they do different takes of the song with different levels of cowbell. So on take two, you can see Christopher walking through the booth glass laughing as Farrell's too tight shirt rides up exposing his stomach and chest hair while he's dancing and playing the cowbell. Even Will Ferrell can, at one point can be seen breaking character for a moment after Jimmy Fallon laughs for the first time in the sketch. So according to Jimmy Fallon, Farrell wore a tighter shirt in the live sketch than he wore at dress rehearsal to allow his gut to hang out, in turn making Fallon laugh more. So what was actually real in the skit and what didn't happen? So if you guys have listened to the song Don't Fear the Reaper, the cowbell is present in the song, although it's largely drowned out by the rest of the instruments. So one thing that wasn't correct in the skit is that the recording session they say takes place at Sunshine Studios in 1976. In reality, the song was recorded at the record plant in New York City either in late 1975 or early 76 because the album it was featured on Agents of Fortune was released in May of 1976. Now, the producer that Christopher Walken plays is Bruce Dickinson, not to be confused with the Iron Maiden vocalist of the same name. Now, Dickinson was not the actual producer of the song. The song was produced by David Lucas, who had discovered the band and produced their first album, as well as Agents of Fortune and Spectres. So the actual Bruce Dickinson was a mid-level manager at Columbia Records, whose name appears on Blue Oyster Cult's reissue CD and a Greatest Hits compilation as the reissue producer. So the SNL intern who sent out to get the record got a hits compilation CD instead of Agents of Fortune. Now, Will Ferrell later revealed that a woman working in the art department of SNL was the daughter of the man who worked on Agents of Fortune. She reportedly told him that the band had seen the sketch and said the actual cowbell player in question was not unlike Ferrell's interpretation. So producer David Lucas on his website and in interviews when he was inducted into the Buffalo Music Hall of Fame says that he was the one who played the cowbell on the record. So what did the band Blue Oyster Cult think of the skit? It's been claimed that the skit is possibly one of the top 10 funniest skits of all time in the show's history. Now, soon after it aired, word quickly filtered back to the members of Blue Oyster Cult who were in the midst of a resurgence of sorts. So two years before the sketch aired, they'd released their first album of new material in, in over a decade. It was 1998's Heaven Forbid and were preparing their next effort, which would be 2001's The Curse of the Hidden Mirror. 
While neither of those records really enjoyed the sales of some of their past records 20 years prior, they continued to tour steadily. And while Farrell's version of Reprocession was wholly imagined, it wasn't too terribly far from the truth. So according to Blue Oyster Cult drummer Albert Bouchard, ironically it was similar to what happened in the skit. We had a whole bunch of overdubs on the song, and one of them was Randy Brecker. He was a flugelhorn part on it, or his trumpet or some sort in the middle part that we didn't like. So I said, hey, I want to do a triangle on that part, and that's what I want. I really hear a triangle in my head. So according to Bouchard, it was a composer and jingle creator David Lucas who made the faithful call to add more cowbell instead of triangle. I just want to hear that sound, Bouchard recalled Lucas insisting, and I said, okay, I'll play it. And I'm like, yeah, it's not working. And he's like, oh, well, put some tape around it. So I put some tape around it. I use like a timpani mallet, and everybody's like, yeah, that's it. So it's funny that Farrell even noticed it because it was mixed very low, and you don't really notice that in the track. Now, longtime frontman Eric Bloom admitted that it took him several viewings to fully get how hysterical the skit was, but he said he immediately appreciated it and said he actually happened to see it air in real time. He said it was a rare Saturday when we weren't on tour, so I saw it live and we had no idea, he recalled. It was a jaw-dropping. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know, are you guys fans of SNL and were you watching it back in the 2000s when the show was actually funny? So let me know your comments down below and be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And which stories would you like to see covered in future episodes? Take care.